Peace and love, family. Peace and love. It's your boy Chris and Light, and coming back again with some more spiritual fiddles. And today I'm going in on Are You Disrespecting Your Potential? Ooh, this is a good one, family. This is a good one. Are you disrespecting your potential? Ooh, this is a good one because, yeah, you are. Everyone is. One thing about humans is you'll never reach your fullest potential. You'll never reach your fullest potential. I don't care how hard you try, you'll never reach your fullest potential. The human mind can't even conceive how bad we really are because we've been beat down so much in the course of our human existence. But regardless of what you do or how good you think you are, you're nowhere close to your full potential. You're nowhere close to it. Depending upon where you live dictates how far you can evolve. You can only evolve so far here in America because there's like a shroud of pestilence and negativity and the, the herding consciousness that you unwillingly adopt. It just happens when you're around negativity. But if you were in some place like Tibet or some um, catacomb in China, somewhere where there's not a lot of negativity and the energy there is so good, um, I assure you, you can evolve a lot faster and go further than you would if you were over here in America. But I'm not saying that because you live in America or London or wherever you live at, you can't evolve and grow. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is you'll never come close to your fullest potential here. You'll never come. You see this, the, the thundering out there like, boom, Shango was like, you're right, Chris. You're right, Chris. But back to what I was saying. Now that you know that you'll never reach your fullest potential, try anyway. Just try anyway. Regardless of what you do, family, 50% of people are going to love it and 50% of people are going to hate it. You might think it's thang. You might think it's the best thing you've ever done. But there's going to always be some people who can't see or they can't conceive you being that which they are not. And they'll try to pull you down. So what I've learned to do is do it anyway, regardless of what it is. A lot of the stuff that I do for myself that I create, I don't pay anybody anything, anything that I've ever done. Since I'm of the creator, I like to create. And some people say, oh, you can't do everything you do for free. I have. I haven't paid for any services. I haven't paid for anything since I've been doing what I've been doing. And I've been just fine. So the whole idea of you can't do something is a limitation that you're placing on yourself. It's a limitation that you're placing on yourself. You always want to exhaust the free first. You always want to exhaust the free first. If you can't do it for free, paying for it won't make you do it anyway. It may motivate you a little bit because you put your little bread on the line, you got some skin in the game but it's not gonna be the ultimate motivator. The ultimate motivator is you choosing to do it, whatever it is. Everything that I've done from writing books, everything that I've done, I chose to do it. And I knew going in, I wasn't gonna get the help that I needed, so I had to learn it first. I dove head first into whatever I've done, and I've been successful at it. And you dictate your own success. The money you make from your creations has nothing to do with the success of it. The success of it is you completing it. Whether no one ever knows you wrote a book, no one ever knows you created this life-changing thing, the fact that you created it, that's success. You don't want society to dictate your winning. Winning starts before you begin, and losing doesn't happen until you stop. Failure doesn't happen until you choose to stop. Instead of thinking about something you're failing, just think about the learning experiences, okay, family? Stop worrying about what the step two, three, four, five, and six look like. And don't even worry about what the first step looked like. Sometimes you have a plan and you take that first step and you take that second step. That third step may put you on a whole nother plan. The, the art of doing is just that. It's an art. Once you start doing, once you start creating, different energies will start downloading into your consciousness and you'll be compelled, implored, and fueled to do things that you normally wouldn't do. I believe that there is a, a deity of ideas. And this deity 
bequeaths or gives or bestows ideas to people all around the world, multiple people at the same time. I feel as if when the creator or any higher entity helping governing this earthly domain needs to impart something in the human race, it give it it, it kind of puts it in the minds of all these other humans too. Because scientists across the world are always working on the same thing unbeknownst to one another. How is that? The same thing with you. You may have had a great idea and then you didn't do anything with it because you didn't believe in yourself. You didn't think you're, you, 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 weren't, you weren't embracing your potential at all. Just a little bit of your potential, you weren't embracing it. And someone else came out with that same idea and you was like, man, I had that same idea. But since you didn't do, with it, do anything with it, the deity ideas gave it to somebody else. But even still, there's an infinite amount of ideas. Just look around your room right now. Look at what you got on. Everything around your room and your home and what you're wearing right now was first a thought in someone's mind. And they went through with it. They believed in themselves. They were sipping from the teat of their own spiritual potential, family. And they did that thing. And you can do the same thing too. You just gotta try. One thing that humans do, 85% of our thoughts are negative. 85% of your thoughts are negative. So the demonium is just like this force that's hovering around earth that coerces humans not to go through with what they want to do. It, 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 it encourages you to choose to lose. It forces you to fight for your limitations and then you get to keep them. It keeps poverty consciousness, consciousness, pestilence, anything unfavorable running through your mind when everything, when anything good is introduced in your consciousness family. So since you know that there's a demonium out there, since you know 85% of your thoughts are negative, why not choose to counteract that? So you know going in when you wake up, 85% of your thoughts are negative, your unconscious thoughts, the thoughts that are running in the back of your mind that you're not even aware of are negative. Since you know that, if you're in control of yourself, if you're your own guru, if you're working on mastery of self, Start choosing to think positive thoughts. If someone gives you the middle finger on the road while you're driving, don't lower your energy down to where they are and give them a middle finger back. My wife gave me a great remedy for that. She was like, going forward, Chris, I know you're upset, but give them the thumbs down. That's a little better than the middle finger, I think. And I've been using it. I've been feeling good because of it. It's not negative. I'm just letting them know that they're getting the thumbs down. Again, I'm not telling you to do that. What I want you to do is just look at them, look at them and just be like, man, I'm glad I'm no longer in that place anymore. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes people are introduced in your life to let you know how far you've come. There are aspects of your lower self just testing you to see if you've really evolved. That's how I like to look at it. But again, some people are nothing more than low vibratory algorithms in your life to make sure you don't evolve. Sometimes it's your mom, it's your father, your brothers, your sisters, your lover, your children. But when you meet someone that's low vibratory algorithm that's sent here to make sure you don't evolve, you gotta distance yourself from them. I'm not telling you to stop loving them. You can't stop loving your mom and your children or some folks can't stop loving their boo. But you can embrace your light and let them know that, hey, I respect my light. When you're around me, raise your vibration up to where I'm at and meet me halfway. You know what I'm saying? If they love you, they will. If they don't give a dang about you, they won't. It's just as simple as that. But everything is a, is a choice. And if your child is of age, and they're 18 or more, and they don't like what you have to do or say, if they can't meet you where, they, where you are, and, you, and you're paying all the bills, I'm not telling you to put them out. But I'm telling them they need to go somewhere else. Because you come here for you. You come here for you to evolve. You come here to maximize your potential. You know what I'm saying, family? I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. Everyone, it's, it's a little challenging and diff difficult in the beginning. So if you know it's going to be challenging, challenging and difficult in the beginning, just choose the first year as your learning phase. Don't go into anything within the first year thinking you're going to have it all figured out. When I first started learning how to trade and read the stock market and thing like, things like that three years ago, the first six months I was like, oh, baby, I cracked the code. I think I got it. And then it changed on me. And it keeps changing on you. 
You know what I'm saying? And that's the ebb and, ebb and flow of life, the parabolic curve of everything. There's always going to be ups and downs. But when you're in your down phase, you have nothing more to worry about because you have to go up. So even when you're up, you want to give thanks and see if you can make it last a little longer. Nothing ever stays the same, family, unless you choose it to. If you're suffering right now, if you're thinking about what it is that you want to do, the first thing you have to do is get the money out of it. Get the money out of it. Just see yourself being successful. I've never met anyone. I have some wealthy friends. I've never met any of my friends who are wealthy that became wealthy by doing something they hated. If you're like, oh my God, I can't do this. And you're like, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I got to get up out of here. If you're like that, I'm not saying quit it. All I'm saying is you got to balance it out with something that you love to do. Me personally, I love doing these YouTube videos. I love going out to eat with my wife. I love having deep conversations with her. If I can monetize our conversations, I would. You know what I'm saying? And one day I might. I may just start recording our conversations and not letting her know and create a YouTube page and just have some visuals up. You never know. But the best thing that I can implore you guys to do is just try something. Just create something. Something that wasn't already here. That's how you get your, your, juice, your, your, your creative juices going. You know what I'm saying? If you're in your dream state, you want to uh, increase your awareness in your dream state by increasing your awareness in your waking state, family, because your dream state is a, is, is a continuation of your waking state and your waking state is a continuation of your dream state. So if you're in your waking state and you're always thinking of things to do and create to evolve and make that bread, when you go to sleep, you, your, your subconscious mind is going to take over because your ego is gone. When you, when you sleep, when you're dreaming. So it's gonna start giving you messages and things like that. It's always good to go to bed with a thought. If you're having a problem or something like that, you can't really think of the answer in your waking state, go to bed on it. And when you wake up the first two minutes before you brush your teeth, before you wipe all that sleep out your eyes and get to curl it off your mouth, go in there and write down all what, as much of your dream as you can think of. Because once after about two minutes, it's gonna be gone indefinitely. But when you write that thing down, you can anchor that experience. And then before you go to bed the next day, you can read about what you already anchored and you may be able to jump right back in that dream again with the conscious thought of, I'm gonna remember as much as I can. And it's gonna help you in your waking state, family. It really, it really is. So hopefully you got some juice on how to tap into your potential a little bit. If you wanna support me, go out to Amazon, pick up any one of my eight books. The Enlightened Talk, Poverty Consciousness, Wealth Consciousness, Dissolving Your Limitations, Consciousness Equals Choice. All five of those was bangers. Seeds of Time, Seeds of Time's Volume 1, and my latest book, that thick one, Divination. Ooh, that divination is, if, you, if you're one of these people who are new on your spiritual path, or you're old on your spiritual path, and you want some practices that you want to try, hundreds of them in divination, family. Hundreds of them. How to do it when to do it, all that good stuff. Pick up the book. Let me know if you've already, a lot of people have already purchased Divination and I give thanks for you guys. But if you're one of those people that purchased the Divination book and you've tried some of the practices in there, let me know. Send me a message or on one of these, on one of these videos, comment what Divination you've done and hopefully it will inspire other people to go out and get the book and try it and win too. I wrote Divination Family to help you guys. I wrote Divination Family to help you guys. I wrote Divination to help you guys. And I'm gonna give you a spoiler. June 1st, I got another book called <laughs> The Book of Gods. Ooh, that's all I'm gonna say about that family. It's gonna be a banger. It may be 400 pages, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see. Well, on that note, family, you already know what it is. I'm out here winning.